Hello everyone, this is Powell Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about an extreme wind event with nocturnal tornadoes, a high fire danger, and flash flooding. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. Good morning, everyone. I've got a lot to talk about, so let's get right to it. Uh, let's take a look at the this overall jet stream. I and mean, we've got a powerful trough digging into the midsection of the country, really pulled in some much colder air on the backside with a 990 low millibar low pressure. But it's going to uh, pack an impressive wind field today over a good chunk of the country. And numerous high wind, wind warnings and watches are in place. So let's take a look at that and where they're all located because this hazard map is extremely busy with uh, very uh, high, high winds and we got numerous winter weather advisories in the portions of Oregon and Northern California. They've already had upwards to almost six feet in the mountains of the Sierra, Sierra Nevada here uh, just since Sunday. And so that very heavy snow and that, those, that same system is gonna be moving into the midsection of the country and really start to elevate this afternoon, packing some very high winds and a lot of extreme high wind warnings in this area into Colorado, going into uh, Kansas, the panhandle of Texas, as well as Nebraska, South Dakota, going into uh, you know portions of upper uh, Missouri, as well as Iowa into Minnesota, and then Wisconsin. But we also have to be concerned about a a high fire danger in a lot of the areas that just has been so bone dry as of late the relative humidity values drop all the way down to five and ten percent that is dangerously low and that just adds fuel to the fire of with this increased high wind gusts that are going to be moving in this area this afternoon uh, the storm prediction center has put out elevated to critical fire danger warnings in this area from Clovis, New Mexico, extending all the way through the panhandle of Texas into Amarillo. And it really gets critical in Kansas, anywhere from uh, Gooman to uh, Liberal to Dodge City to Hayes. All this area is going to be highly favored for uh, wildfires and grass fires that are going to be spreading across. And with these winds like this, these fires can jump across the street. So this is a, a dangerous time with these high winds going to be moving moving through and that south wind is just going to be fueling uh the fire so definitely be on the lookout if you're going to be in these these areas uh later on this afternoon but we also have to be concerned about a huge wind field that's going to be coming across this is the latest maximum wind gust update from the national weather service and look at the graph here down at the bottom left-hand corner. You can see where it starts to increase into the desert southwest. We've got numerous 40 and 50 and 60 mile per hour. Once it get in, gets into the mountains of the uh, Colorado uh, mountains here, man, these, these winds could be packing upwards to 80, 90, almost 100 miles an hour. That is not a misprint, guys. This is a dangerous event. And as this continues moving across, numerous 60 and 70 miles an hour wind gusts from the texas panhandle to kansas all the way to nebraska getting into iowa today and and southern uh, minnesota as well as south dakota where all these areas are going to be under the gun with a very high wind warnings as well as some tornadoes are going to be breaking out later on this afternoon we've been talking about this area and really been highlighting this area for the past two days and man, it's just intensified as more data and more data is coming in. And now the Storm Prediction Center has elevated it to a moderate risk. This is a rare event for this far north for December 15th. In fact, they've never seen you know a tornado in this area really since 1950, since they started keeping records in this area. That's talking over the last... 70 years they've never seen a tornado in this area portions of iowa as well as a southern minnesota here but unfortunately that could happen today with this extreme rare event lifting all the way further north uh into uh portions of iowa and as well as uh 
Minnesota here and, and parts of Wisconsin where they've got a huge chunk where we should have supercell thunderstorms start to break out around four or five o'clock this afternoon and these things rapidly move across let's break down the tornado threat with this area because in fact they have elevated this as well to a 10 percent risk zone anywhere from uh rochester minnesota get into waterloo iowa into ames as well as lacrosse going into uh cedar falls iowa as well those areas will be highly susceptible and seeing some of those nocturnal tornadoes they could develop as early as four o'clock but then rapidly start to move across as they lift up uh, and they're going to be moving really quick but yeah all these areas from lincoln to, to minneapolis all the way extending uh, to, almost almost to green bay are going to be under the gun for seeing some of those uh, tornadoes later on this afternoon so definitely be on high alert in this area because you just literally went just recently went through a snow event and we still have snow on the ground so the sirens are going to be going off and you're like hey there's snow on the ground that's but please take this seriously i know this is an extremely rare event to be talking about severe weather and tornadoes this far north especially for december 15th 10 days before christmas but that is the situation we have on the table today so have your NOAA weather radios handy have be on high alert starting around four five o'clock in these areas as these storms are going to be rapidly moving across in fact the extreme forecast index the eff is basically off the charts that is basically forecasting an extreme event for this type of time of year and, and portions where they have that moderate risk area into iowa and to southern minnesota and to portion of wisconsin in fact a lot of the schools in this area have are, are going to be closed today if not letting out early preparing for this event on the table especially what happened in the tornado prone areas just recently so this is a dangerous another dangerous event that's going to be on the table later on this afternoon you can see from the latest 850 millibar we've got an extreme amount of shear uh, by six o'clock into portions of Iowa and to the north right around this sector that's where we could see some tornadoes start to break out and these storms are going to be moving so fast let's take a look at the overall tor uh, tornado parameter index and this is significantly raised from yesterday and that's why the storm prediction center has elevated this risk from a 5% to a 10% because now we're seeing some six and sevens and eights start to pop up and it should start to uh, explode as we get into the afternoon in far eastern portions of Nebraska, especially as we get into Iowa here, get into the southern, extreme southern portions of S South Dakota, southern Minnesota, and this will rapidly move off into portions of Wisconsin as we get into the overnight hours because if you take a look at the latest uh, 3k nam uh, kilometer radar by the time we get into that zero z that's about six o'clock that's ex essentially where that 850 bar millibar low pressure is and we've got a kind of a fish tail of thunderstorms breaking out and these are all going to be isolated so because so we could have some some very high winds uh, packing a punch with some 60, 70, upwards to 80 mile per hour winds with these supercell thunderstorms. And then isolated tornadoes breaking out along this sector. And this is around you know, five, six o'clock this afternoon. And take a look at where it's at by the time we get into that zero, uh, four, four Z time frame. That's about 10 o'clock. So you're talking, it literally goes over the entire state of Iowa over a four hour span. Now, Iowa's about 310 miles across, guys. So we're talking about estimated these, tr these storms are going to be moving at 80 and 90 miles an hour. That's almost unheard of. So that is the situation we have to deal with. Not only are these storms going to be moving at 80 or 90 miles an hour, but we're also having wind gusts of 70 and 80 miles an hour. And then we've got tornadoes uh, in its path too. So that's why you're literally going to have little to no warning in these areas. So you need to be on high alert 
as we get closer to nightfall, especially if, if you live in eastern Nebraska, all the entire almost the entire state of Iowa and southern Minnesota and going into portions of Wisconsin and be on high alert because you're going to have as soon as the siren goes off, you need to take shelter immediately because these storms are going to be rapidly on on your doorstep in no time flat with that storm movement potential that's on the table. So as this continues moving across and diving southeast, we do have a marginal risk for some severe thunderstorms as that same front, you know, continues to shift and off into the southeast. So as we go into that Thursday time frame, we could be having some, you know, some elevated storms start to break out in uh, east East Texas here, get it into portions of uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, as that same cold front kind of moves through. So if we look at the overall map as we get into Thursday time frame, it sags, unfortunately, in some of the same areas that get hit hard with their, their tornadoes as of late. So we could see some showers and thunderstorms start to develop into East Texas, going into Arkansas, going into northern parts of um, Mississippi here, western Tennessee, western Kentucky, southern Illinois. As on the on the back side, that's the colder side. So it's going to clear out in Minnesota and Iowa as we get into Thursday. So it's mainly going to be an overnight threat with, you know, as as those storms rapidly move across. But as we continue the day into Friday, that same front just kind of backs up as a warm front. And it, when it does that, it's pulling in the south south wind. It's pulling in the increased water vapor temperatures from the Gulf of Mexico. And that's going to set up some heavier rains uh, along the same areas that got hit with the tornadoes just uh, you know a, a week a, a few days ago. And then we should see some stronger thunderstorms eventually as this this front start to tail a little bit further south, getting into uh, you know portions of North Texas as we get into Friday night. But on the north side, that's the some of the colder air. So as you know, as this moves across, as we go into the day on Friday, some of these areas that that are going to see some severe weather is going to be replaced with some snow going to be moving, moving back in the picture. So we, we go from a from some snow on the ground to to a you know high wind threat to tornado threat and then more snow going to be back back by Friday and and the and some of the same areas that are going to be seeing some of the uh, you know the, the severe risk but so as we move into that Friday night time span that cold front will continue to shift and it kind of like stalls over North Texas and to eastern Oklahoma and to portions of Arkansas, southern Minnesota, Missouri here, southern Illinois, you know, western Kentucky here, uh, southern, uh, southern Indiana, as it, it kind of sets along this little boundary here where it's going to bring some higher rains in those areas as we get into Friday night into the, the daytime hours on, on Saturday. And by overnight into Saturday night, going into Sunday, that front will continue pushing off and to uh, get further down into the south. Now we're talking South Texas getting some rain, you know, portions of extreme West, West Texas, getting into Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, and into Georgia here, uh, as well as the Carolinas and getting up here to West Virginia. And it could be cold enough where we could start to see some of the little bit of a changeover by the time we get into, you know, Saturday night going into that Sunday time frame in upstate New York, going into portions of Massachusetts and Vermont and New Hampshire, and eventually start to creep into Maine here. But as we get into the daytime hours on Sunday, it still drags in that colder air. Uh, and then that, that same cold front continues to push a little bit further off into the south. So now we're talking areas into Georgia, into the Carolinas. They're going to be impacted from those from those rain showers and then as the as we're cold enough onto our into portions of new england some of these could be in the form of snow getting into uh the, the northern new england areas up up into the day on sunday so let's take a look at some of the high temperatures you know coming up on sunday as we finally see a more you know moderation of what you would typically start to see this time of year for december standards as things start to cool off 
uh, by the time we get into that Sunday time frame. But looking at kind of a sneak peek for next week, we do see the beginnings of a little bit of a pattern change for some areas where we start to finally unlodge some of that Arctic air from, you know, Canada, getting into, you know, Alaska that they've had for the, really the last several weeks. And finally, some sub signs of a little bit of a pattern shift where we see, could see some colder anomalies start to creep back in the picture especially out west and to our far northern states and then getting into portions of the east and the northeast as well you know getting into portions for your overall for your christmas week but predominantly for the south much of the south and the southwest overall remaining uh, overall you know above average so let's take a look at over the overall rain prospects over the next week through monday and you can see where that boundary starts to starts to lie some of the heavier rains are going to fly into portions of east texas getting into portions of north texas <clears throat> getting into almost you know portions of south texas as well as eastern oklahoma going into arkansas uh, southern missouri southern illinois southern uh, indiana you know western tennessee western kentucky these areas that get hit hard from the tornadoes unfortunately going to be seeing some almost multi-inch rains adding up over that Thursday, Friday, Saturday time frame. So I'm definitely concerned uh, in those areas. And then out here off to the west, uh, they had some much needed rain for, for South for Southern California uh, just the last a couple days. But now the heavier rains have shifted back further north into Central California and off the coast of Oregon and uh, Washington here where they still have that atmospheric river and, and uh, full effect and where we desperately need the rain in the midsection of the country unfortunately there's just not much to speak of and that's why they have the critical fire dangers in those regions but here's your snow over the next couple of days through that sunday monday time frame like i mentioned we still have those heavier snows and the higher terrains that that one snow event where the north side of that 850 millibar that's where your heavier snows or a little bit more moderate snows are going to be lying into the Dakotas and to Minnesota and portions of Wisconsin. And then, yes, we could get some snow into far northern areas of northern New England here as we get into the weekend time span. And it's not out of the question out here in far extreme West Texas as we get into the day on Sunday. Some of that colder air drains in. Some of these temperatures are going to be around 35, 38 degrees potentially. But all this area is really high. This is all mountainous terrain out here. The elevations in some of the mountain regions are anywhere from three to 8,000 feet. So that's why you're actually seeing possibly some snow, uh, light, very light snow in these, uh, these areas because of these elevated areas up in the mountains of uh, Texas and extreme West Texas. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Please share this video. Do take this seriously. It's one of those situations where we uh, we have to stay on a high alert today and stay well prepared for the high wind threat and the severe threat that's on the table and the risk zones ahead. So please share this video with your friends and family that are going to be impacted from these areas today. And I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely subscribe to my channel and catch the latest update where I protect you before and after storm.